In this video, we are going to see a new feature of Entity Framework Core 7, support for JSON columns. Some database providers allow us to have JSON documents on a column. This brings us the advantages of NoSQL into a SQL world, like SQL Server. Well, in Entity Framework Core 7, now we have support for JSON columns. In this way, we are going to write link queue code that is going to be able to traverse JSON documents that are located in a column in a table in SQL Server. Besides that, we are going to be able to update those JSON documents. Let's see that. First, let's see our application. This is a simple application. We have an application DB context here. And of course, I already have installed Entity Framework Core 7. I will use SQL Server and I'm using Release Candidate 1. So besides that, we have the application DB context here. We are configuring that we're using SQL Server. Also, I am configuring that if I have the data type of a property as a list of strings, then I am going to use this converter, which will allow me to save that list of strings as a simple string that is just separated by commas. I have here the converter. Now, besides that, I have a people table that is based on the person class. I have here the person class. It only has two properties, ID and name. And also we have this address class, which we're going to configure as an own entity in just a moment. Own types allows us to configure entities that can only be used as navigation properties for other entities. This allows us to have centralized the concept of an address in our application so that I can reuse this address class in different entities. So in our case, we're going to use it on the person class. So let's do that. Let me come here and let's say address, address, and let me forgive the null. Then after that, we're going to configure the own entity. So let's come here. Let's go back to the application DB contest. Let me overwrite um, model creating. And in here, I can configure that the person entity. So model builder entity person and then owns one. We say owns one because here we don't have any kind of collections. So owns one. And then I will say person, person, address. And I will leave it like this just for a moment. Let me compile just so you see what happens when we use an own entity without using a JSON column. So let me say package manager console. Let's go to the package manager console because we want to add a new migration. Migration, initial, enter. Now, as you can see here in the migration, we have that in the people table, we're going to have three columns that corresponds to the properties of the address class. So we have phone numbers, a street and country, but I don't want that. Let's say that I want to have a single column that is going to contain all of this information as JSON. So let's do that. Let me remove this migration. This was just an example. Let me remove this migration, close this. And now in order to configure this on entity as a JSON document, I'm going to do the following. I'm going to say here options, options dot to JSON. And that's it. With this, we're going to save the address as a JSON document. Let's see that. Let me come here. Let me compile because sometimes if I don't compile, it throws an error. So let's come back here and let me say add migration initial. And we're going to see that now we only have one address column, which is nbarcar max. And not only that, if I say update database and I push all of that into my database, then when I save information using the address property of the person class, it is going to get saved automatically as JSON. Let's see that. Let's come to the program class and let me write some code here. Let me initialize my application DB context. I will instantiate the person class. Let me say Felipe equal to new person, we're going to see that we can use entity framework just as the same way that we have used it in the past. I'll say Felipe here and then address, new address. And then let me say country, my country, DR, Dominican Republic, a street, I'll just say Kennedy. And then phone numbers, I can write a new list of strings and say one, two, three and four, five, six then semicolon here and just so i can run this application several times without any issues i will truncate the table 
every time I run the application. So let me paste this, truncate table people. And now after that, what we're going to do is that I am going to create two new persons, but I will just copy and paste it so you don't have to watch me type that. So I'll just paste this here. And then after that, I will just add Felipe, Gloria, and Robert. And then I will save changes, context, save changes. And now let me press Control F5 to run our application. And you're going to see that everything succeeded. So let's come back here. Let's go to SQL Server Management Studio. I will refresh my databases so I can find the one I'm using in this video. Let me say, select up 1000. All right, so here, as you can see in the address column, we have a JSON document. Let me paste one here so that you can see that indeed we have country DR, phone numbers one, two, three, and street Kennedy. All right, so this means that indeed we are saving the correct information. Now, let me come back here. I want to do something. This should have been the R, and this is important because I will make the next example about that. So besides being able to save the JSON document in the column, I want to be able to query the JSON document. Let's do that. Let me create a new context. And now I will say bar people equal to context people to list. And let me put a breakpoint here press F5 to run our application in debugging mode because I want to be able to see the information of each person. So if I hover here, let's come here and let's see that we have Felipe, but not only that, we also have the address and in the address we have the DR, we have the phone numbers, and we also have the street. And the same goes for every other person in this list. This means that Entity Framework Core is capable of taking the JSON document and map each of the properties to the corresponding properties in the CLR objects. All right, besides that, I am able to not only simply bring that information from the JSON document, but also I can use a word clause based on a property of the JSON document. For example, let's say that I want each person that's from Dominican Republic. So let me say where I will say here person person dot address dot country and let me say here double equal Dominican Republic and that's it. With this I can press F5 and we're going to see that now we only have Felipe and Claudia which are the only two persons that comes from Dominican Republic. We have Felipe here and also we have here Claudia. We don't have Robert because Robert is from USA as you can see here. All right, so besides using a where, I can use a order by. For example, I can order by a street. Let me say order by, and let me say here, P address a street, and that's it. Press F5, we're going to see that we should have Felipe first. Let's come here, we're going to see that indeed we have Felipe first. Now, let me use let me use order by descending just so you see that indeed we have a different ordering. Here we are, let me click on here and you can see that now we have Claudia first. All right, so this is indeed working. Besides being able to query data, we can update the data. For example, let's say that I want to update the street of the person that lives in the US. Let's do that. Let's say here, person in the USA equal to context people first and I will say address country USA this should be double semicolon here and then I can say person in the USA address a street and I will just add a two at the end and then I will say context save changes and you are going to see that indeed in this simple manner I can update the data of a JSON document in a column using Entity Framework Core. This is done. So now let's go back here. I will refresh here. And you can see that here, I will copy this and I'll paste it here. We have a street and a two at the end. Awesome. Besides being able to work with single own entities, we can work with collections of own entities. Let's see that. Let me come here. And let me create a new own entity, which we're going to call statistics. 
let me paste this here. And as you can see, we have statistics, we have some data, and we also have a list of more statistics with more data. And not only that, but statistics itself is going to be a list here. So list, list of statistics and statistics. And we're going to say new here. All right, so now how do I configure this own entity which have a list here? Well, for that, we're going to use own many. So let's come here to the own model creating. We need to use the Fluent API, model builder, entity, person. Then we're going to say owns many. Of course, a single person can have several statistics. So let's say here, P statistics, then options. Let me say options. We're also going to configure it as a JSON column. So let me say options to JSON, but not only that, remember that in statistics itself, we also have a list. We have a list of more statistics. So we also have to say owns many for this own entity. So let's come here. Let's come here again and let's say options owns many. And then I'm going to say E more statistics, semicolon here. And that's it. With this, I have successfully configured a collection of own entities that is going to be used in a JSON column. Let me compile because I need to add a migration. So add migration statistics, enter. All right. So here, as you can see, we have a single column again, which is going to have the JSON document. Let me say update database to push that into our database. And now let me add some data into our people that we have here. But just so you don't have to see me typing all that, I will just copy and paste it. So let's see that I paste this here. And now we have some statistics here. We have simple data here. What is important now is to see the JSON document being stored in the column. So let me just run this application and let's see that everything succeeds. Then let me close. Let me come back here. Let me put an asterisk here so that we get all of the columns. Let me select this. And now we have a statistics here. Now this is a little bit long as you can see here. So what I will do is that I will go to a website that allows me to visualize this. So let me go to viewer. And now as you can see, we have all of the data in this case of Felipe, as you can see here, we have the date, integer one, text and so on. It is important to realize that we have a limitation with Entity Framework Core 7 and querying collections in a JSON document. For example, we cannot filter by properties that are part of an array. Now, again, this is a limitation of Entity Framework Core. This is not a limitation of SQL Server. Let's see that. Let me come here and let me say that I want to filter. Let me show you something. I have here Felipe, right? And I have integer one equal to one. And we also have Claudia integer one equal to one. And not only that, but we have Roberto and Robert have integer one equal to three. So I want to make a query that brings us all of the people that has integer one equal to one. So that is Felipe and Claudia. I cannot do that in Entity Framework Core 7. So let's come here and let me try that. If I say bar people with integer one equal to one, and let's say context people, if I say something like where P, P statistics, any, and then statistics S integer one equal to one, this doesn't work to list. Let me put this in another line so that you can visualize everything better. This does not work. Does not work. If I press Control F5, you are going to see that indeed, this will throw an exception as you can see here. It says that it cannot translate that statement that we did. So what can we do? Well, in our case, what we can do is to write the SQL manually. For example, let me come here to SQL Server and let me show you how we can write that query. Let me minimize this so we have more space. We're going to use a cross apply. We're going to say select name from people cross apply. And we're going to say open JSON. 
we're going to use the statistics column and let me use this to indicate that this is the root of the JSON. Let me put this in here so we don't have any kind of issues just in case. And now let me close this and let me say with, we're going to use only one column. So I will say integer one of type integer. And I will say here, this dot integer one. And then I'm going to say here S of statistics where S dot integer one equal to one. And then in here I can say S dot integer one and that's it. Now I can say, F5 and you're going to see that we have Felipe and Claudia and integer one, of course. If I don't use the where, just so you see that we also get Felipe that has another value here, which is two. Remember that Felipe has two statistics. Here he has two, as you can see here. And Roberto has, Roberto has integer three and you can see that here. And if you want to apply a filter, you can do it like this and you can put that, for example, in an store procedure and then call that from your c -shell application. But what is important to know is that we now have support for JSON columns in Entity Framework Core 7. If you want to learn more about Entity Framework Core, please check out my Udemy course today. And also I have courses on SP.NET Core with React, SP.NET Core and Angular and many more. Link with a discount to all of my courses in the description of this video. Thank you.